Mr. Speaker, Ursula Le Guin wrote one of the most powerful stories I've ever read. It's called The Ones Who Walk Away from Omalas. It's a story about a city called Omalas. Omalas is perfect, a beautiful city, a bright, towered city by the sea. It is an everlasting festival. There is plenty of food for all. There is no crime, no discontent, no boredom, and no illness. Every pleasure is indulged with no consequence. It is as close to heaven on earth as anywhere can be. Yet there is a cost to this perfect world, a dark cost. In a basement under one of the beautiful public buildings of Omalas, or perhaps in the cellar of one of the, its spacious, spacious private homes, there's a room. It has one locked door and no window. The room is about three paces long and two wide, a mere broom closet or an unused tool room. In the room, a child is sitting. It could be a boy or a girl. The child looks about six, but is actually nearly 10. The door is always locked, and nobody ever comes, except sometimes the door rattles terribly and opens, and a person or several people are there. One of them may come in and kick the child to make him stand up. The others never come close, but peer in with frightened, disgusted eyes. The food bowl and the water jug are hastily filled. The door is locked as eyes disappear. The people at the door never say anything, but the child who has not always lived in the tool room and can remember some sunlight and its mother's voice sometimes speaks. I will be good, the child says. Please let me out. I will be good. They never answer. There are no calves to his legs. Its belly protrudes. It lives on half a bowl of cornmeal and grease a day. You see, in Omalas, the perfection of their city is built on the suffering of one child. They would like to do something for the child, but there is nothing they can do. But if it were done in that day and hour, all the prosperity and beauty and the light of Omalas would wither and be destroyed. Those are the terms. The terms are strict and absolute. There may not be even one kind word spoken to this child. It is the existence of the child and their knowledge of, the, of its existence that makes it possible for the nobility of their architecture, the greatness of their music, and the profundity of their science. But not everyone can accept the cost of their perfect city. Sometimes a man or woman who sees the child fall silent for a day or two, then leaves home. These people go into the street and walk down it alone. They keep walking and walking straight out of the city of Omalas. Mr. Speaker, I brought forward a bill this session that would have required that Virginia's EV future not be built on the backs of child slaves in Africa. It did not get a hearing. I hope that next session, Mr. Speaker, we can be among those who are willing to walk away from Omalas. Thank you.